Hello, Rims of the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize, and the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon are growing all over the world. This is episode number 361. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Hey, everybody. So good to be here again. Um, Our hearts are heavy for the folks in Kentucky. My goodness, there's been a loss of life and and so many homes destroyed, and um, are there... They're in our prayers, and we ask you to pray pray with us that God would just bring comfort and help to those that have gone through this horrible time. Absolutely. You know, a lot of us at, at the conference I just got back through from in Ohio, we were talking, and I think really the things that are going on, and uh, there's a great video by Dr. Bill Schneblin at uh, Prophecy Watchers, or Pro- Prophecy Club, I'm sorry, on the secret weapon of Russia to take down America and is dealing with scalar energy. And how that, uh, you know, they bought it from Tesla. The American government didn't want it, which was really stupid. And uh, they're like on their 20th, 25th generation. They can literally control weather. And I think that we are under a level of weather warfare with everything else that's been going on. Uh, But one of the things that I really believe, I believe that we can pray and ask the Almighty to bind uh, them redistributing energy. And because what they'll do is they'll warm the waters of the ocean. They can control the, uh, the patterns because it's like... All of us are in drought, and they, in Kentucky and everything, they're getting everybody's rain. And so what we need to do is begin seeking the face of God and ask God to begin moderating that and, and to bring that back underneath his control. And uh, But when our hearts go out, and, and uh, uh, I know there are a lot of Christian organizations down there that are trying to help, and we need to keep those in our prayer. And if we can financially help them, uh, like Convoy for Hope, and I know there's many others, uh, down there to try to, to bring some aid to these people that have lost absolutely everything. Uh, you know, when uh, I just got back uh, Sunday from the conference in Ohio and had a, had a great time, it was with Dr. Mike Spaulding and all of them up there, and we met a, a good number of our partners that uh, I had just like the first time I've actually heard from them. And, uh, Mary, you don't know how, how humbling and, and how moving it is when you see a couple – with tears in her eyes, saying what uh, what a difference the podcast and the teachings have made in their lives, and how God has turned their lives mm-hmm. around. Praise God! Uh, God is is in a, in a time of preparing His remnant and setting things in kingdom order, and uh, I'm just grateful that we get to be a part of it. It's it is humbling, and, some, and uh, sometimes I feel like you know God's done it in spite well, of us. Well, I do us. too, and uh, I'm it just warms my heart to hear that especially when they have babies oh, oh yeah. i just love to hear oh. about those little One babies family that, showed me they didn't, they didn't bring them with them but they had uh they have seven beautiful little children they showed to me and then uh randy said what they didn't share with you is that uh, she was carrying twins she wasn't oh. quite big enough to <laughs> to show yet and that, so oh i hope we get to meet them someday and so I, they, they weren't able to come to this conference, but they said they're going to make it. To that. We said we'll be watching more closely in the future, so that, that'll just be wonderful to get to meet them maybe next year. It would be. It would be. We've got but, so many people. I, it's just breaking my heart because we can't fit every, everybody in there. Uh, but we're, we're going to have lots of conferences, and so we're going to get everybody in there eventually. Yeah, and what's what's neat is a lot of the, the people that I do conferences with, they just and all of them have expressed uh, the desire that, hey, you know, just pray, and if God leads you, give me a call, and I'll make sure that I can come. And so it's it's there's 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 this as much anticipation on the speaker side as there is on those that are that are going to be able to attend. So it's, I'm just excited. I know God's getting ready to do amazing things. And so thanks have just uh, did, uh, it was a great conference. Uh, we're back. In fact, this morning I was over at uh, over in the, the Diggin Center walking this morning, and to my delight. The cabinet guys were in there finishing up. Uh, they had to like, readjust all the cabinets and stuff to finish up their job in the kitchen, but they're putting out all the cabinetry for the for the audio video center. So we're almost done, except for well, the audio visual, which would be in September. September, and, uh, and it's already we got it paid for. Yeah, got, um, that money set aside. We paid them half down, and then the money's all set aside for that. And um, it's just so exciting because I, I know God wouldn't be doing this unless he had a plan. Yeah. You know, if it's just us going to get up there and talk, well, 
<laughs> but if God's telling us things, if he, then that means he's got restoration for his people in mind. He does, and, and Pastor Neil uh, Peterson was so kind. He took me through and showed me their entire uh, setup so that I could get in my mind how to connect all these equipment into the computers and everything else, and he showed me how all theirs work. And uh, we know what's so wonderful. Not only do we have the company that's installing it all, if I have a question, but uh, he's, he's put himself at his disposal. If you ever run into questions and you don't know what to do, and there's also another guy that helped him install it all named Jeff, uh, that they said, listen, both of us are at your disposal. Anytime you need oh, us, just pick up the phone. That's so sweet of them. Well, we've, uh, we definitely uh, can see that God is having mercy on the weather here. Uh, this last weekend was it was like Saturday, I think, was the day that it, it didn't get out of the 70s. And it was such a good relief from all that heat. And, the, you know, when it doesn't rain, it makes it worse. The heat is more impactful. And the good news is, is somehow by the um, by God's hand, I've had a bumper crop of cucumbers. <laughs> so I don't know if you guys like bread and butter pickles, but I've been able to, in my free time to make a ton of them. And I, I don't really like bread and butter pickles from the store, you know, but there's a recipe in that blue book for canning that I've always used where you, you take the cucumbers and onions, and and I absolutely love that with sandwiches or anything. So I'm going to have a big bunch of that <laughs> ready now, for the conference. This, this is an Hopefully you this is an Arzarkian measurement. She has made a mess of them. Yeah, a mess of them. <laughs> that means a whole bunch. <laughs> so we're, we're just looking forward, and God's providing so wonderfully. We just couldn't ask for more than what our partners have done. And um, thank you. It's humbling. You know, one of the things that, uh, that we were planning to do is, you know, we were, we're kind of watching my we'll make sure that we had enough for the conference and everything. So we told them, listen, just wire in one camera right now and uh, go ahead and put everything up there so that after the conference and when we have the funds available, put in the second camera. And I, I had shared that up at the conference and we had one of our partners come and hand me a check and say, put that second camera in. And so I've already uh, uh, called the company and said, hey, if it isn't too late, let's go ahead and get that camera into this order so that all that can be done at one time. And uh, it's this humbling, absolutely humbling, uh, to the place where you just you just want to fall at the altar and say, Father, you're doing something here. Yeah. And and this thank you for letting us be a part of it. And and Father, give us the grace that we don't get in the way of what you're yeah, doing, but help to facilitate what you're wanting that's to true. do. And I I, I kind of feel the way of that more and more every day. Well, we just got to keep praying and fasting and believing that God's going to move. You know, I was, I'm kind of what I was getting ready to talk about today. This last week, it's just been like a series of things that God's taken me to, and it all fit together <laughs> at the end. Um, I was thinking about um, all the scriptures where it says um, God's mercy endures forever. You know, there, in Psalm 118, 136, I think it's 136 where it just goes over and over. It'll say a line and it says, for his mercy endures forever. And so I was, was looking back at um, the story about Solomon. And, you know, Solomon's always been, uh, it's an odd story to me. <laughs> because, and I, I think now I can understand um, why I've had so much trouble with Solomon. Um I found out in all that I was looking at, did you know that the Scottish Rite celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles? Although they renamed it something completely different and made it a mockery of even the biblical principles. Well, they call it, they call it the Feast of Tishri. Which is the Feast of Repentance. But let me read you what, what they have said, and I thought, oh, my word, that's where this is, is coming to the churches, isn't it? I mean, it, there's so many, much of the Freemasonry in the churches, that yep. this is where this uh, this is just part of where they're they're saying they're going to observe. This was in I think 2019. They they were getting ready to uh, observe the Feast of Tishri, and this is what they say. Finally, the law, legend, peace, equality, unity, and fellowship of the Feast of Tishri combined to make this the Masonic Feast of Feasts. At the reflection table, all men, Jew, Christian, Muslim, Buddhist, and others, join in a common voice of thanksgiving where every man can share his gratitude and express his sincere thanks to him who made all things. 
the deity has given us life, the strength to live it fully, and the joy of sharing the beauty and goodness of his creation with our fellow men. That's just a little portion of it. But look at how many churches have went to that that are saying the God that Muslims worship Mm-hmm. Is is the great I am? No. <laughs> no, there's there's a there is a Masonic principle, and and theirs is because so much special. The Scottish Rite was was founded by Albert Pike. He was deep in the Kabbalah. Well, in Kabbalah, the their god is is Metatron, which is the the god of the second heaven. He has a throne. Of course, we know him as Lucifer, but that that permeates through the whole thing. So, it, whenever you're dealing with mystery religions. There's all the mystery religions. I don't care what you name it. You can name it Haji Paji. It doesn't care if it's if it's if it is not the God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It falls on the mystery religions, and and Lucifer is is a god of a million names, because he doesn't care what you call him as long as you don't call on the name of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Well, the Freemasons just about worship Solomon. Yeah, I mean that is is so huge in all their writings, and I thought. I thought, you know, that would explain why the descendants of Freemasons, part of why they have so much trouble is because the the Masonic Order has essentially worshipped all these things. Yes. Not only did they bow at a Luciferian altar, but they've, they've combined everything. Well, they, they believe that it was by Masonic secrets that the Temple of Solomon was, was created and because Solomon had made friendship with, with Hiram, the king of Tyre, he's the, also the Hiram of Biff. Uh-huh, that they uh, talk about. But it, simply because Solomon had gotten his cedar from there, as well as King David, because that was the place to get cedar. But it was through Hiram that Solomon got bit by the mystery bug of, of, of the mystery religions. That's, in my theory, is one of the reasons that he married all of these princesses from all the nations around him when you understand that the Tower of Babel, when God confused the languages, he also divided up all their knowledge. And so every king over his country was the high priest of the mystery religions in his nation. The priestess would be his daughter. And so he was actually bringing in all the daughters of these priestesses of all these mystery religions trying to put the pieces of the puzzle together. That's why on the Mount of Olives he ended up creating a, a uh, temple uh, for Ashtaroth and Molech yeah, and, and all gonna, those things. I'm going to read that, and I thought every one of these things that, that he built these things to, a Masonic descendant would be attacked by. Yes. So let me read in uh, First Kings. Uh, but King Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, and Hittites, all those tites. <laughs> Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Am- Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did father, David his father. Uh, then did Solomon build a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. Likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burned incense and sacrificed um, unto their gods. And it says, uh, And the Lord was angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice, and had commanded him concerning this thing, and he should not go after other gods. But he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Does this blow anybody's mind other than me, that the Lord appears to you twice and and is telling you, and you go ahead, is, is that the pull of a foreign woman? Is that the pull of... I, th- I, think, I think one of the things that he has done... Now, God gave him wisdom. Yeah, and they talk about was, that all the way. What, what he was after was gnosis, knowledge. And he wanted the knowledge of the mystery religions. And and so he, he did all this stuff, marrying it, and, and brought all these abominations into Israel. And uh, in, in fact, when you look at, um, 
uh, what we call the Star of David today. Now, there's, there, there is some debate on this because some believe that the Jewish people didn't actually use it until about the, the second century A.D., and it was by a false messiah named David that didn't make it past his first battle. That was his signet. Uh, but when you look at the mystery religions and, and Kabbalic writings, they said that one day uh, originally the signet ring of Solomon had a menorah on it, and that after he got into all this mystery religion stuff, he replaced it with the star that was on the altar of Ashtaroth, which is the the hexagram that Rimfan. it came in. The, it was the star, of and and the variant of that, of course, is the star of Rimfan. But also, when you, all there there is the um, the the seals of Solomon. There's these all these occult writing books that said that with that uh, with that signet ring with uh, with the hexagram on it that he could control demons, all these other things. And I'm thinking if that is true, and and he was doing all this, then why? Did he write the book of Ecclesiastes? Because after he ran over uh, for all this, all this misreligion stuff, he stepped back and looked at it and said, "It's all vanity." Mm-hmm. Well, and that was that was the other thing I looked through, and there was a commentary that said, uh, "Did Solomon repent of his sins and return to the Lord later in life?" One has every hope that he did. The book of Ecclesiastes was almost certainly written by Solomon. It was written after all his works and acquisitions were accomplished. On reflection, he pronounced them vanity and chasing after the wind. Solomon recognizes that God's works and word are eternal in all that really matters. This indicates a reformed and penitent Solomon who followed again after the heart of his father David. Like David, Solomon is forgiven. The temporal consequences of his sins had to stand, but from the eternal consequences he was saved. And the temporal consequence was the kingdom was divided yeah, after and, that. And I think the lesson we need to learn not only was the kingdom was divided, but it began embedding mystery Babylon and all these things into Judaism, mm-hmm. and then after they went into Babylonian captivity, that kind of resonated with that, and they brought it all. Down. I mean, that's the very foundation of Kabbalah, right? And I, I think that we as Christians forget that there are there are certain things that we can do that, even though God can forgive us, there are things in the natural that will play out. I mean, it answers why why from the womb did God love Jacob and He hated Esau? It wasn't just for what Esau did; He saw what what Esau what Esau set in motion what his descendants mm-hmm. would do. And we, we have kind of lost track of that. That's why covenant keeping and, and trying to do the things of, of God are so important in staying true to the faith. Well, there's such a mixing um, of the Kabbalah with the real. Yeah. And that and that's a real problem. It is. Because then then we run the, the risk of running the way that Solomon did where you know you just mishmash it all together and man that all through the word it tells you the consequences of that oh I, and I see a lot of the charismatic movement going to things in fact it, everybody's familiar with you know the glory of God came in and we call it Shekinah that is derived from the Zohar which is a Kabbalic writing and the in the Hebrew it's Chabod which which is the the, the greater the wav- uh, the gravity of the presence of God and yet we're referring to it by a Kabbalic writing Every time we call it Shekinah, and don't even realize right. people don't ever research and, and find well, out the I, origin of things. Well, that's been spoken of in churches as long as I can remember. Absolutely. Um, you know, in Second Chronicles seven fourteen is the verse we've all been quoting because our nation's in trouble. It, you know, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, and I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. We've all been, um, but you know that y- you have to take into account. Uh, everything that Solomon did before, and then as he saw the folly of what he had done, um, then he he was dedicating the temple. And I, I noticed something um, because they were they were in the seventh month, so the feast that they mention in there is the Feast of Tabernacles. So that would explain why. That would be so significant to the Freemasons then, mm-hmm. because of Solomon. That everything's connected to him. Um, but but listen to this: when the ark was brought in the temple, this is Second Chronicles five thirteen through fourteen. It says it came even to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, "For He is good; for His mercy endureth forever." That then the house was filled with a cloud even the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house. And so here you have 
um, the people shouting that out. He's good. His mercy endureth forever. Okay, then Solomon says this extensive prayer, asking God to hear from heaven uh, when his people stray but and repent. And boy, he's got firsthand knowledge of that. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he left in a big way. Um, so it says in Second Chronicles 6, 40 uh, through 7, 3, it says, Now, my God, let I beseech thee, thine eyes be open, and let thine ears be attended to the prayer that is made in this place. Now, therefore, arise, O Lord God, into thy resting place, thou in the ark of thy strength. Let thy priests, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation, and let thy saints rejoice in goodness. O Lord God, turn not away the face of thine anointed. Remember the mercies of David thy servant. Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. When all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshipped and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. There is something that is powerful about us declaring that. Absolutely. And and boy, are we in a place we need to declare it now. We've got Nancy Pelosi heading to Asia. China's saying if she goes to Taiwan, man. They're going to shoot her down. Um, this, this is a serious thing. Yes. And so if there was ever a time uh, for us to say this, I look, looked up the word. Um, I hope I don't butcher this. I looked up how it's pronounced. It. It's like kahased is the word there for uh, mercy, translated loving kindness, unfailing love, or steadfast covenant love. And I mean, there's there is power in covenant. And I think that's I think you're right on the money that that's something that we need to declare daily over our lives. It is, and I, and I think this is this is something that that we need to um, to thank him and give him glory and honor because he has shown us mercy. Yes, these people, these whistleblowers, are telling the truth about the plan, guys. Yeah, we were are. supposed to be out of food a long time ago. The, I mean, they are stumbling and tripping over themselves, trying to stay with the agenda, but God's mercy is is causing them to stumble. And, you know, they're, they're trying their best to hit their reset button. Uh-huh. But one of the things, I've, I've been praying that God's hand would be over that until he says prophetically, now you're allowed to. You know, there, there's, we know there's going to be a time that the new world order and all this stuff, you know, happens. But we don't know if it's time yet or not. God, put your hand over that. Don't let them do a thing out of your timing. Because that's what they're trying to do. Because they believe that if this is this is an occult doctrine. If they believe that they can take the things out of God's timing, that puts them in a position to overcome God. And so they're they're trying to take it out of His timing. By us declaring this, it puts God's hand over that reset button. You know, I, I one of the things I have been asking everybody to pray, and I've been praying since even before Trump was in office is, Father, just one more time, knock them flat on their back, put your foot across their neck, and say, I want you to understand that I am Almighty God, and you're not going to do a thing outside of my timing. Well, you know, when Roe versus Wade was passed and all these things happened, I mean, it it puts such power in the enemy's camp that these last generations haven't seen the mighty move of God. It was um, so—God just puts things in order for me sometimes. I'm so— thankful to him that he does that because i don't have a mind like mike where i go here and there and gather all this information so i woke up on sunday and i was going to turn on and listen to the news as usual i get the wrong time on it and there was a preacher preaching and he was talking about uh, azusa street and now there there was a thing after that you've talked about that was started by freemasons that wasn't real yeah that starts up in kansas but azusa street everybody has said the power of God was there. And I, I think the man that started that was so humble yes, and was repentant. And, and that was the, the, the true, true time of this. And so they had a cloud show up. He was, he was saying there was this mist that would show up and they even brought fans in to see if they could blow it out and it wouldn't blow out. And sometimes it'd get higher. And then they, they had so many, I think it was four times that the fire department was called because people would say that building was on fire. They would see And it wasn't, they just saw flames. And so let's look at that. That's, that's what they were seeing when this temple was consecrated. Yes. And the Ark of the Covenant came. That's what they were seeing. So there has to be a connection with the repentance crying out, 
oh, God, you're good. Yes. And your mercy endureth forever. It says his mercies are new every morning. Do we all need mercy? Oh, my. How every I have day. been so thankful for his mercy in my life. I should have been a grease spot. Um, More times than we can count oh both of us. Oh, my. But his mercy was there. And I'm crying out for his mercy. You know, when it comes time for, for things to get rough, I've been preparing for that for many years because God told me God's judgment was coming. But but he also told me if these things would happen, if these prayers are said, if these things would change, then the judgment could be you know put down the road. And um, I have tried with everything in my might to pray everything he's told me to um, – to get ready because I, we're in such a mess. We we need to have people, the remnant, raise up like never before, if with the truth of the word, in in re, with repentant hearts, all of us. Yeah. So we can declare that, and let's declare it together. Lord, you are good, yeah. and, your and your mercy, mercy endures, endures forever. forever. Let it let it resound. Yes. Let it resound across the airways. You know, one of the things, and in, in Dr. Emanuel, she was the, one of the frontline doctors that they so ridiculed because she also talked about demonic being involved with COVID and all this stuff, as well as ivermectin and stuff working. And they, they so ridiculed her. In fact, she has lawsuits against CNN and some other things, right? Now. I mean, you know, this woman doesn't take no for an answer. And she you knows like, if God tells me, I'll take down Goliath if I have to, you know. And one of the things in her message, Mary, that she shared, she said, listen, if we'd pray these things, she said, what I have seen is that the the elite have tried to do these things for several generations, and if that generation did what God told them to do, it was kicked to the next generation. And she said, we're in a, we're in a place that if we will pray and do these things, everything they're wanting to do will be kicked to the next generation. Oh, we need the time. And so that was absolutely confirming this temporal loop that we've been talking about. And and people that, that are not even awake to what's going on around them, that are just listening to regular news, Mike, their lives would be so shattered if, if they get this done. And so I, I think that God is showing us this so we can daily declare that. Yes. God, you are good, and your, your mercy, mercy endureth endure. forever. We're so thankful for your mercy. And Mary, it, at the least, I think that let's say let's say this is the right timing for all this to happen. Us praying this mitigates a great portion of the effects on it, so that we're able to stand during it. Right. It, it's positioning the remnant. Now, I, I believe that that temporal loop that God showed us is not over yet. That it, that they're still trying to get things out of timing. Uh, L. A. Marzulli and I both agree on this and, and it's interesting when you sit down you can talk to colleagues that have researched this and we both come to the same conclusion it's really reassuring they have a plan one of the plans they have in motion is to create a false tribulation period that looks like the mm-hmm. one that we see in the book of revelation but is not and at the end of it jesus doesn't show up the ufos do mm-hmm. and it would completely I mean, it would cause every Christian to doubt their faith, and it would totally discredit Christianity completely. It wouldn't okay, cause you, me to doubt mine it, no, or yours because we know about it. <laughs> that's that's their plan, though, yeah. is to completely discredit it, and then all of, and so then the false Messiah would rise in conjunction yeah, with the Anaki showing. I up. think there's a really good chance that's that's what they have planned, because I've always thought about that. You know, this this Antichrist figure is supposed to just mesmerize the world and they're all going to follow him well there would have to be something so significant we can't even imagine because look at look at all the the people in the past that you know were great leaders and things none of them came close to that none so it makes sense to me that 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 that's what they do but you know the story of solomon is also such a a good encouragement for anybody that's messed up because i doubt anybody listening to us has ever messed up that bad (laughs) You know, that's that's some serious stuff when you build um, on the Mount of Olives. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, Josiah, that little youngster, <laughs> I think it wasn't he eight years old when he became king, he tore all that stuff down. Yeah. But, you know, the, the, the interesting thing, and this shows you, especially if a king does it, when Solomon built that on the Mount of Olives, that became ground zero for a conflict that is not going to end until Jesus comes back. Mm-hmm. Mary, Jesus, okay, where Solomon built that temple, Josiah tore it down, Jesus was crucified on it. He said, listen, my blood's going to have to redeem it. But Mary, I've always wondered, when Jesus comes back 
and he sets his feet down. He doesn't land in Jerusalem. He lands on the Mount of Olives, and he cracks the mountain in half. Yeah. Kind of shows his power, doesn't it? <laughs> Show, you know, it shows his power and says, you know what? Because that desecrated this mountain, I'm tearing the mountain in two, showing mm-hmm. that that God, because that goes all the way back. You know, it, it's Marduk, Saturn. Uh, there's, there were two figures, the Hora Babylon. This goes back to the research that uh, the, the Gilberts are doing, and they did a wonderful, both of them did outstanding presentations yes, up they there. Did. That You go back to Samaria, the original name for Ashtaroth, uh, and all that was Inanna. And Anana is the horror of Babylon, the, this whole thing that goes on. And then what's interesting is she got all her power by stealing it. This boy, does that sound familiar? Mm-hmm. She stole all of, all of her power and her authority. And, and God comes back and he judges Anana. He judges Saturn, which is one of the modern names, which uh, in, in fact, uh, Derek has a presentation that Saturn may be different than, uh, than Satan and he may be a whole lot worse. He's the one that gets loose during the tribulation period for a period of time that just absolutely decimates everything because he is the god of destruction. And he has a book coming out on that. Yeah, he did, he just had one come out on that, and and so it's it would that, be at Skywatch. It's at Skywatch, guys. You need to get it. Uh, these these presentations and the information they have done. The archaeologists are missing it, Mary, because they're not saved. And so they're, they're looking at all the evidence through the wrong paradigm. You uh-huh. put it back with the biblical narrative, and it comes back wow. into absolute clarity beyond your imagination. Isn't that something? And, and, and it shows you that when we say, in the end, Jesus wins, you don't have a clue at, at just how powerful that is and how that he is going to erase everything that the enemy has done when he comes back. Oh, I love that. We're all going to be getting to watch that. <laughs> yes, we are. Well, I, I just want to encourage everybody, listen, if God can use Solomon so mightily after he messed up like that, yeah. there's nothing that you've done in your life that God can't turn it around. It's not too late. You're not too old. Just get prepared for God to move mightily because that's what we're getting ready to see. We're getting ready to see lives that have looked like, well, everything's over. You know, I, I can't do anything for God. Oh, yes, you can. I mean, we're getting ready to see restoration in ways you've never seen, physically, mentally, emotionally. You know, when Jesus took that crown of thorns, a lot of times mental anguish is worse than physical pain. Yes. And so many people have have endured that. Well, listen, there's restoration coming. There's clarity of thought coming to people. There's going to be healing of the minds like that they thought couldn't be done for mind control victims. There's healing coming. The whole nation and maybe the world has been affected by this mind control. I know that that it's affected everybody through TV, through broadcast, and so there needs to be a healing, a restoration there. You know, I think that's that's how they've sewed this up and got this agenda done is they've mesmerized people through the, the television and we've all got so used to watching it. That's yeah. just, you know, when I was a kid and it came on the scene, that's all we ever did. Well, you it was know? A, it was, it's a Nazi invention for one thing. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and in, in the, the new book that I'm writing, I'm not going to share the whole thing, but it's so interesting. When Israel, when Judah was going back into the land, they tried for 21 years, Mary, to rebuild the temple and all that. And it's like all hell broke loose. They couldn't get it done, and they felt like complete failures. And so then God sends a prophet down there, and he says, how come you haven't rebuilt the temple? You know, after 20, it's like, because by that time, they were just in survival mode. So many of us feel like we're just in survival mode. It's just like, boy, if I, if I can just get through today. And, and this prophet comes, and he said, listen, you know, the reason why you have, you, you make money, but you, you can't keep it because it's like you have holes in your pocket is, is that you have not built the temple of God. It's like God gave them a project, and they didn't do it. And it's like, where have you been the last 21 years? Haven't you realized that they even had a whisper campaign and the king's ear and the, and the king that authorized it now was turned against us? And they have used economic power, political power, threatening of, of war, and all these things that stopped us. But Mary, when the prophet came, he brought a prophetic refreshing and a prophetic mm. anointing to get it done. And what they couldn't get done in 21 years, they had done in yeah. five years. That's right. Five, the number of grace they had it done in five years. There are many things that all of us have tried to do, but without that prophetic anointing. Yeah, God told us to do it, but it seemed like all hell broke loose. No matter how hard we tried, we couldn't get it done. 
But you know what? We're in a season. God is loosing mm-hmm. a prophetic anointing yes, and his is. grace. Yes, he That's is. why that we need to proclaim his grace. Mm-hmm. In fact, so much so that Zerubbabel was instructed, when that temple is done, you are to go and to stand in the middle of that temple, and you are to cry out one word, grace, grace. He was told, it's not by might, it's not by power, oh, but by right. my spirit, saith that's the Lord. Right. And the spirit of God brought grace that, that did the impossible. That which they couldn't do in 21 years was done in yes. five years. Yes. And let me tell you something. There is an anointing coming today that if we would just begin saying, God, your mercy endures forever, and we begin yes. depending upon the grace of God, and we return back to the covenant of God, and we return back to the task, but the task is now anointed from heaven because of the prophetic right. anointing that is being released, God is not only going to restore, he's going to enable us to do that which was impossible without him. Oh, that's good And preaching. at the end of it, what we need to shout out is grace, 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 because our mercy of our God endureth yes. forever, it endureth from generation to generation, and he is a covenant-keeping God. That's right, and that is different than the greasy grace that's being taught in a lot of churches. Oh, yes, and we forget there are, that I've got a we, message out there dealing with the five love of the five types of grace. Well, and there's a, there, this is a level of grace that comes when you, you remember your covenant, oh, yeah. when you do the statutes, when you keep his word. Yeah, we, we talk about, you know, we, we always like to center up on the unmerited favor part of grace. That's the lowest form of grace, Mary. That's, that's the entrance level of grace. And then there's a grace that makes you grow. There's a finisher's grace. There's a, a refiner's grace. There's all these different things that God is waiting to release in the body of Christ. And when he does, he is going to have that end time army to complete his plan and his will in the earth because there are things. You see, for me, the, the, the harpazo, the rapture of the church, and I believe we get out of here toward the end, although I've told my friends that are pre-trib, I said, guys, if you're right, I'll give you a high five on the way up, you know. But... I believe that the the harpazo, the catching away, is to not get us out of here before we get our heads bashed in. It's because we have stood toe-to-toe with the enemy, the Antichrist. We have held our own that he can't make any more advances until we get out of the way. Mm -hmm. That we are like those Navy SEALs that have held the line regardless of the cost. (laughs) And there's not one more thing that we can do. There's not one more thing that we can, there's not one more level that we can mature in God. And God has said, you have matured to the place that you're ready to stand with my son. Come on up. That's it. And, and then we're we can not, have that wedding feast. We're not going to have these compromising things. And and I just want to pray over um, the Masonic Lodges. Father, for every Masonic Lodge that has defiled your feast. Yes. Father, we ask you to forgive those sins. Yes. Father, break the power of those high-level demonic powers that have taken tentacles and placed them in the descendants of Freemasons and made their lives miserable, Father. Make a way of escape. Make a way of escape. Forgive the sins, and Father, roadblock this from continuing. Roadblock it so that the, the people can be free. And Father, we just ask forgiveness for the sin of, of uh, bringing in pagan things yes. into your kingdom. Father, it's totally against your word. We repent of that, and we ask for your grace. We declare you're so good, God. And your mercy endures forever. forever. And Father, this, this season, as we... Your body celebrates the Feast of Tabernacles. Let it be undone in such a way that there's such an anointing and such honor to you that it supersedes all the desecration that they have done to this wonderful feast. Because it is a divine rehearsal of the millennial reign of Mm -hmm. Jesus. And they are not going to prevent it. They cannot stop it. And, Father, we will celebrate one of these days, we're going to celebrate in Jerusalem as Jesus is coronated. Yes, we and will. And he sets down on his throne to rule and reign for a thousand years. And in fact, his reign will control the economy, not the Masons. Because unless a nation honors him during the Feast of Tabernacles that year, that depends on whether they have economic blessing or drought, according to the Word of God. Now, Father, for each person that listens to this podcast today, Father, for your remnant, Father, I declare that your mercy endures forever over their lives. Father, let your mercy take a hold and let every shackle be broken right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, free your people that we may serve you in spirit and in truth. And Father, in an honor and integrity and truth that we could serve you with clean hands and clean hearts. 
and have your fire on the inside of us, the anointing in that river flowing through us, and let us affect everyone for the kingdom of God. Let us be salt and light in the earth in a generation card in darkness, we ask in Jesus' name. In the ancient plains of Shinar, an evil was born. The first world king, the prototype transhuman, the ultimate despot, Nimrod. In Babylon, the son of perdition defies the Shinar Directive, a plan to enslave humanity and make war against the God of Heaven. God's intervention at the Tower of Babel only delayed Nimrod's hellish plans. As the powers of Mystery Babylon gather to create the new Tower of Babel and to prepare for the Son of Perdition's return, Heaven is issuing a clarion call to the remnant. The Shinar Directive will reveal the strategies of the enemy that will help you untangle yourself from them and become the victorious church. It is time for the remnant to wake up, discern the times, and be infused with Heaven's power to withstand the Shinar Directive by Dr. Michael Lake. Get your copy today at kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.